beautiful. So our agenda today will be about, will cover uh, what is uh, GRC, Governance, Risk and Compliance, what is, I, uh, what, what is COVID-5 and its origins, uh, COVID-5 as a governance for enterprise IT framework, what is uh, the perspectives we have, principles, enablers, and the implementation methodology offered by COVID-5, what is ISO IEC 38500, what is the difference between COVID-5 and this ISO standard, and how can we start implement, implementing governance of enterprise IT, and how can BECB help us in this ISO standard specifically. Let's start with what is GRC. Before talking about governance, COVID, and the ISO 38500, we should know what GRC is. Because GRC is the main uh, discipline uh, about the, the governance. GRC is about governance, risk management, and compliance. It's about three good and strong pillars inside any organization. And whenever we would like to have a successful organization, we need to concentrate on these three pillars. For governance, it's about, it's about how to achieve our uh, stakeholders' needs, how to achieve these needs and goals. For risk, uh, the definition of risk is uh, it's, uh, uncertainty. Risk equal uncertainty in two meanings. The first one is a good opportunity, which is not certain, and the other one is a bad effect, a bad threat over our perspective, over our objectives. And the last one, which is compliance, it's about conformance to all what we have, like policies, procedures, laws in, in, inside our countries, and, regulas and regulations in some cases too. So, we have GRC and uh, Below GRC, we will have governance, one of the three pillars. For governance, we don't have a specific, concise definition. Whenever you are searching for the definition of corporate governance or even simply governance, you will have a lot of definitions. Some of them are talking about stakeholders and their needs and how can we achieve these needs. And others are talking about how to comply with mechanisms, processes, and have written policies, procedures, and they are implemented all the time. So let's go on to check how COVID-5 deals with governance. But before talking about COVID-5, let's have a look about its origin. COVID-5 is the most famous framework developed and owned by ISAC in USA. And why it's developed? Because the board of directors decided that we need to tie together and reinforce all ISAC and knowledge assets with COVID, which means that COVID-5, the version we have now, is uh, something like a combination of all ISAC I had before, all the best practices ISAC I had produced before, now are combined into one single integrated framework, which is COVID-5. And by the way, COVID-5, makes a good differentiation between what is governance and management. Because a lot of people, I have delivered a lot of training courses, and I have a lot of delegates in these courses asking about what is the difference between governance and management. Of course, after knowing what is governance, because many people are thinking that they are the same. And also, at the same time, Isaac has a lot of frameworks and guidance, but they all now or related to COVID-5 or included in COVID-5. So, to say it in a simple way, uh, whenever we are talking about COVID-5, COVID-5 includes or refers to a lot of frameworks and standards. And later today, we will know the difference between a standard and a framework in a comparison, a simple comparison. Uh, COVID-5 contains five uh, domain areas. The first one of them is evaluate direct monitor, the EDM. It's a for governance. And as you can see, the 
and they are aligned, playing and organized to the transition stage if we are talking from ITIL and ITSM to deliver support and support which is obviously the operation stage and the last one but it's not the last one it's the last one in explanation but it goes beneath the other three which is monitor, evaluate and assess it should help the other three management domains which is ADO, DAI and DSS so we have one domain for governance and four domains for management. In these five domains, we have a lot of frameworks and standards, as you can see, included or mapped to or referred to. So we have our ISO, the first one. Then we have ISO IEC 31000 for risk management. We have TOGAF for structure and the architecture of our organization and specifically IT in some cases. We have PRINCE 2 and PIMBOOK as a framework for project management. We have CMMI for software development. We have ITIL version 3 or its new update, ISO, uh, sorry, uh, ITIL 2011. And ISO, uh, it's, it's related to standard of course, ISO IEC 20000 for service management. And at the same time, we have ISO IEC 27000 for information security. As you can see, we have a lot of frameworks, public frameworks, and a lot of international international standards combined or referred to in this framework. Whenever we are talking about the origins of COVID-5, we should know that COVID started by ISACA in 1996, and it was about just audit, how to audit your information, uh, technology department and the information systems you have. Then in 1998, there was the second edition, which is COVID-2, and it was about control. It's not about audit. Audit is about how to find findings, conformity and the non-conformity, and those are the are major or minor. But now in control, we are talking about how to implement something and control its implementation and compliance to the policies and procedures you have in the first. Then we have COVID-3 in the year 2000, and it was about management. It's bigger than control, as we all know. And in 2005 and 2007, we have COVID-4.0 and 4.1. And this one, it was about IT governance. It tried to translate what business needs to how can we in IT departments achieve these needs uh, in, in, in a technical way. And then, in 2011, we have the last version, which is the current one, which is COVID-5, and it's about governance of enterprise IT. It's not like 4.0 and 4.1 IT governance. It's governance of enterprise IT. And by the way, IT here doesn't mean information technology, as we, uh, I guess, uh, most of us will think like this. It's not enterprise of information technology. IT here is about information and related technology. So if we have our systems, or not our systems, our procedures, our policies, even if they are not documented, even if they are not automated on IT systems, we can have governance for them. So it's a very wide scope. It's about information and related technology, not information technology. It's bigger than information technology. Then let's go to COVID-5, governance of enterprise IT, perspective, principles, enablers, and implementation methodology to know what COVID-5 can provide us with. The first thing, which is a very uh, good point, uh, for, for COVID-5 and for those who are seeking how to implement governance is defining governance objective. What is the objective of governance? We have only one objective, which is value creation for, for stakeholders. So whenever we can define our stakeholders and their needs, we can create value for them by having three activities. The first one, the main activities, of course. The first one is having their benefits realized. 
The second one is by reducing and optimizing risk as much as we can. By the way, we can do the first activity and the second activity and spend a lot of resources, whether they are financial resources, human resources, whatever they could be. So we have the third activity to control both of them, which is resource optimization. So we need to achieve the benefits which are required by our business stakeholders and optimize risk for business and at the same time do these two activities while optimizing resources, which is doing more with this. This is the value creation perspective of COVID for governance objectives. To move on, we have in COVID-5 governance and management separated and well-defined, which means governance only deals with top-level management. They deal with business needs and business stakeholders and, of course, their needs by doing three main activities. Evaluate. Evaluate what? Evaluate what are the situations we face now, what are the resources we have, what are the options we can choose from, and then they will decide. And their decision will be direction. So they evaluate the current situation and options we have. They will choose what to do, and they will direct the whole organization. Then the direction will be forwarded to management. I will come to it later. But after direction, we will move to the main three activity, which is monitor to monitor the management staff. Are they doing what we asked them to do? Are, uh, are all our objectives achieved? And so on. To move to the management definition, management definition here is all about planning, building, running, monitoring. What the IT services we can provide, because we are talking about governance of enterprise information and related technologies. So we are talking about mainly IT services and all that is related to them. So we have then these four activities have four domains as you can remember in one of our slides. So we can plan, build, run, monitor. So we, we, we have now two monitor activities. The first one in the governance to monitor the governance objectives. Are they achieved, fulfilled, or not? Are we on track or not? And the other one is monitor. And this one is for the lower level, the management and executive and the operations, the day-to-day -day levels. So it's clear now that governments make decisions and the management fulfill and achieve the objectives of these decisions. To do so, we need to have two things. The first one is principles, and the second one is enablers. For principles, COVID make, the, make it easy. We have just five principles. The first one is meeting stakeholder needs, which means to have a governance in your enterprise, you should first define what are the stakeholders and what are their needs, because governance is about achieving their needs and goals. Then, you should have a control over the enterprise end to end. Because if you don't have this control and this power, you will not be able to achieve stakeholder needs. Then, principle number three, applying a single integrated framework. And as we have seen in, in, in a previous slide, we have many frameworks, many standards combined in just a single framework, which is COVID-5. So now we have an integrated framework. It has a lot of best practices and requirements from frameworks, standards, and we can combine them in one integrated framework. Implementing it in our organization will help us. But this doesn't mean, I am clear at this point, this doesn't mean that we can implement only COVID-5. No. If we are trying to have governance, we will have COVID-5 for government for governance perspective, and whenever we are trying to implement it, we will need ITIL, ISO 20,000, ISO 27,000, uh, COVID, uh, sorry, sorry, TOGAF, 
CMMI all the other best practices because they have all the details, all the best practices. But in COVID-5, there are a few of them, not all of them. For principle number four, it's enabling a holistic approach. For enabling a holistic approach, it's about having seven enablers. We will have it in our next slide. For the fifth and last principle, it's separating management from governance or governance from management. Because we can't have them both combined and achieve our goals. We should have some people for decision making, what should be done, and we have we should have another team of people who can implement these decisions and recommendations in a specific way. When we are talking about enterprise enablers, which are holistic and COVID-5 methodology, we have seven enablers, and three of them are considered as resources. The first one is principles, policies, and the frameworks. Don't ever dream of achieving and implementing governance if you don't have simple principles, policies, and the frameworks. For principles, there are a few words which can be memorized easily. Something like HB invent. It's something easy. We can remember it. Okay, and we have some rules inside every organization which can be memorized by all the employees. They should be little in number, two, three, four. They should be simple. They should be not ambiguous because they are the principles. Besides these principles, we should have detailed policies telling us how to achieve these principles. And of course, these policies will not be written from nothing. They will be based on frameworks and the best practices used worldwide. At the same time, we need processes. We have in ITIL uh, 2011, 26 processes. Here in COVID-5, we have 37 processes. So we need to have a process, which is a managed group of activity, activities with defined inputs, defined outputs, and resources, and capabilities for managing this process. At the same time, we need organizational structure. We can't build governance in an organization, and at the same time, we can't see and manage the organization structure. Also, we need culture, ethics, and behavior, so that we can have an awareness for what is governance, what is the benefits of governance, and as we can see, what's in it for me when we are talking to other departments rather than the IT department, because they need to know what are they will what they will take after spending a lot of time dreaming about and trying to have enterprise in their organization. At the same time, we need to have resources, which is information. And by the way, this is the simplest and the easiest enabler we can all have all the time, because any one of us have, has information. But the problem here is not having information. It should be documented, because what is not written Maybe it doesn't exist, as we all know. For enable number six, it's about services, infrastructure, and application. And each organization has these three parts, but they should be described, documented, and controlled by a change management process. And the last one, which is deep skills and competency. And this one is, as I can say, one of the most important enablers, because to have governance, not even governance, to have even IT service management, we need people and their skills to be competent, to be proper for what we are trying to do. So to make it simple, COVID-5 says that we can achieve governance by having COVID-5 goals cascade. What is goals cascade? COVID-5 is trying to make it easy for all of us by translating what business needs are and how can we, as an IT uh, engineer or IT technician, IT people stuff, what does business needs mean to us? So we have the stakeholder drivers, which can come from environment, technology, uh, evolution, from uh, uh, 
uh, regulation from uh, inside our country and, and so on. We have a lot of, of drivers for our stakeholders. Then the influence the stakeholder needs, and whenever we can define our stakeholders and their needs, we should have a relation, a map between their needs and our three main realization, risk optimization, resource optimization. Then we can use the goods cascade provided by COVID-5 and using its appendices and the figures to know how to name a specific needs related to benefits realization or risk and resource optimization to an enterprise goods. We have defined and documented 17 enterprise goods. By the way, they are the most common, which means for your organization, you can use from these 17 something like 7, 5, 10, 11. And in some cases, you will need something out of these 17, a very few cases. So after making our goals cascade, our translation from stakeholder needs to enterprise goals, we have 17 now documented from COVID-5, we can try again and do it in another way to have IT related goals. Now we are going, going deeper inside our IT knowledge. And we have 17 IT related goals and we have a man. Which enterprise goal in the 17 we have is related to which IT related goals in the 17 IT related goals we have. So it's a man. It's a good cascade. It makes it easy for all of us. And the last step is translating or cascading our 17 IT related goods or the sum we have from it, from them, to enabler goods. And as you can remember, we have here all our enablers. Although COVID-5 is concentrating too much on processes, but at the same time, we can move all the other six processes we have in our enterprise enablers. So this is how COVID-5 recommends to implement governance, it's starting from stakeholder drivers to stakeholder needs, enterprise goals, translated to IT-related goals, translated to enabler goals, which is the simplest language IT people can speak and understand. So now we are translating from business language to IT language in a very simple way using a lot of effort uh, made by COVID-5 and the team made COVID-5. Whenever we reach to the enabler goals, we have 37 processes. As I have said earlier, I have one domain for governance and four domains for management. In the domain of governance, I have five processes and in the management, Four domains, we have 32 processes. So the total of COVID-5 processes are 37. And by the way, COVID-5 has done a great job by documenting the 37 processes with each activity, input, output, relation, RACI model for who is responsible, accountable, consulted, informed. Everything, every aspect is documented in a document called Enabling Processes, COVID-5 Enabling Processes. It's a detailed description for the 37 processes inside COVID-5 framework. So whenever I have my goals cascade and reach to the simplest point, which is which process or processes I should implement to achieve our governance, I can have a guidance from COVID-5 enabling processes about this process or these processes and their contents and their activities, inputs, outputs, and all their related information. At the same time, COVID-5 has provided us with a very good implementation methodology. And this implementation methodology is not only about implementing governance. Many people are considering this methodology with seven steps, seven stages to be an implementation methodology for governance. No, it's not 
about governance. It's about improvement implementation. So whenever we are trying to have improvement inside our, our organization, we can use this life cycle methodology. Whether this improvement implementation is for implementing governance itself or any other project. Whether it's a project in networking, in uh, technical support, in uh, communication, security, application development, whatever it could be, or even for governance implementation itself. So it's a very generic methodology to be used. We have three rings inside this implementation methodology. The outer one is program management, which manage the program we have. By the way, COVID-5 recommends that whenever we have a program, the program consists of one or two, sorry, of two or more projects related to each other in their uh, objective. Whenever we have a program, the program should be implemented in six months. No more, no less. And why did COVID-5 choose six months? Because if we are having our program implemented in more than six months, our stakeholders and participants will lose their concentration and their commitment. And what if we have this then six months, something like four, three, or five, it will be not enough time to implement a program, not a project. So we need six months, the six months to implement our implementation life cycle. The outer ring for program management, those who are managing the program and the two or more projects inside it. And the middle ring, which is change enablement, they are the managers, senior managers, team leaders, and all the people who can manage the IT staff who will implement the projects uh, or projects we have, and the people participants, the business participants from other departments rather than the IT department, from any other department inside our organization. And the inner ring, it's about continual improvement lifecycle, which means simply the people who will do the change by themselves, by their hand. Limited by themselves. For the seven steps, or the seven stages we have, I will read their names to keep it uh, short for time because we don't have a lot of time as you know. The first one is what are the drivers? Which is the reasons. What are the reasons to move to have them? Number two, where are we now? So we need to have an assessment, something like the as-is situation. It should be measured and documented. Then we move to stage number three. It's about where do we want to be? So we need governance itself to be, make decision to decide what is to be achieved. We need the to be situation documented and agreed on by top management and the stakeholders. Then in stage four, it's what does Sorry, what needs to be done? It's by making the decision made by stakeholders and top management more simpler for IT staff and the people working inside the program by dividing the objects into projects, plans, activities. Then, how do we get there? It's the project plan, how to implement all these activities. Then number six, it's did we get there after implementing some or all of the activities and the projects we have inside our program? We should measure what is the current status. Are we done or not yet? And the seven, the seventh and the last stage is about how do we keep the momentum going? How can we keep our improvement going? Because it's not about having one cycle, it should be continuous. So any organization which would like to have governance implemented should have an implementation life cycle each six months. So each year we will have two improvement implementation life cycles. This is the recommendation COVID-5 provided us with. 
Now, let's go on to the other part in our presentation about what is ISO IEC 38500. It's a standard as we know from its name, it's an ISO. And by, by the way, IEC means International Electrotechnical Committee, which means that this standard is for IT purposes. It's not like ISO 9000 for general generic quality management system. It's for information technology because it's IEC after ISO. For this ISO, it's a high level principles based advisory standard, which means it doesn't give you detailed guidance about how to implement all the requirements in this standards. It's just about guidance, advisory, and on a high level, as I have made in red color. And in addition to guidance on the role of governing body. So it's only about high level principles, and at the same time, what is the role and the responsibilities of a governing body. So it's a very small and I can't compare it to something like ISO 20,000 or ISO 27,000 because the requirements here, they are a few. For applicability, this standard can be applied by any organization, whether these organizations are public or private or government entities, or even not-for-profit organization. So we never, or whatever organization would like to apply and implement this ISO standard and its requirements, its principles, it's easy and it's applicable. So whenever we are talking about the contents and requirements inside this standard, we have only three clauses. Not like ISO 20000, which we have, in which we have nine clauses, for example. Here we have just the three clauses, just the three big parts. The first one is about the scope. What is the scope of this standard? Application, which is applicability and who can apply it, and objective, achieving and implementing this standard. The second clause is framework for good corporate governance of IT. What does it mean to have a corporate governance of IT? It's a definition. And the third and last one is guidance for the corporate governance of IT. And it has seven parts. Six of them are the six principles we are talking about. So the full guidance provided by this standard is just from principle one to principle six, from 3.2 to 3.7 points inside this standard and they are principle one responsibility of top management and their commitment principle two is strategy to have written a strategy manage it a strategy review the strategy and and to manage and to achieve the objectives of stakeholders as we have agreed before principle three acquisition because in IT we buy a lot of software hardware we have a lot of consultation training and all of these should be controlled properly by having acquisition policies. Principle four, it's about performance. How can we measure our performance, decide what, decide what uh, the proper performance should be, our targeted performance levels? Principle five, conformance. Are we compliant with all the policies, regulations, we have or not. And the last one, which is principle six, human behavior. Because we, we don't have and we can't have any of the other five principles if we don't embed all of them inside our human behavior with our IT stuff and all the other stuff in our organization. We are moving to COVID-5 versus ISO IEC 38,500. We should understand first, what is the difference between a framework and a standard? A framework is a group of best practices which are totally 100% optional, like COVID-5. In COVID-5, we have an implementation life cycle methodology. We have 37 processes, five principles, seven enablers, 
you can choose whatever you like and implement. It's totally optional. For standard, no, a standard is a group of requirements which are totally mandatory. So if you would like to have a certification for your organization in a specific standard, it should be your organization should implement all the requirements this standard requires. For a framework, for individuals. First of all, we have two things. The first one is qualification, which is our people uh, can gain training, exams, and they are now certified after passing the exams. It's called qualification. And we have another thing, which is certification. It's not for people here. Certification is for companies to be honest. A specific ISO standard like 9,000, 20,000, 31,000, and so on. So, for a framework qualification for individuals. And for standard, we have qualification for individuals. Something like foundation, lead implementer, lead auditor. We have many types of training for standards. For certification, frameworks doesn't have certification. So I can't say that your organization, for example, is certified in COVID-5 or in ITIS or in PRINCE2 or PIMBO or in TOGAF. No, there is no sort of certification. But for standards, yes, we have certification for organizations. So, Shall we start with COVID-5 or ISO, IEC 38,500? So this is the slide in which we can have a very simple comparison between the two. For the ISO standard, it's about what? As we have seen, it has six principles. Okay. For COVID-5, it's about how? By having principles, five principles, seven enablers, 37 detailed processes, implementation, methodology, and by the way, COVID has an assessment methodology, which is one of the best assessment methodologies I have ever seen and used. For ISO standard, it establishes a model for the governance of IT. What is governance? How can we have a governance on a very high level? For COVID-5, it has relation between governments and the management and a difference between them. It has differentiated between both of them. For the standard, it provides guiding principles for directors of the organization. Only the directors, the highest level in our organization. For COVID-5, it has goals cascade, as you can remember, for all levels, starting from the highest level to the lowest level. We have a group of simple principles. On the other hand, in COVID-5, we have detailed interfaces, rules, matrices, and racing model, as I have said before. For the ISO, it's only one training course for governance manager. In COVID-5, we have a lot of trainings, something like foundation, implementation, assessor, security, and they are now releasing many more training courses and certification. For the ISO, it's for a small school. For COVID-5, it's for bigger school. So it's a key that ISO is a high level standard and the COVID Five is a detailed and a very detailed framework. How to start implementing governance for enterprise IT? I guess after the last uh, slide, uh, the comparison slide between ISO and COVID-5, maybe both of ISO and the COVID framework can be combined inside our implementation. Actual implementation will need more than and at the same time, these principles, even we 
are agreed on. We need only these six principles. To implement these principles, we will need more guidance about what are the processes which will implement the principles. Because principles are short sentences carrying a lot of meaning with few words. So how can we implement these principles? There should be more guidance. Something like the goods cascade moving us from the stakeholder needs down to IT specific enablers. So whenever you decide that you will go for governance inside your organization, you should ask yourself these simple questions. The first one which is, what is the purpose of the certification project? Why do we need to be certified in something like this? Or to have quality in something like this? Do we have enough support and commitment for tone management? Because, believe me, I have made a lot of trainings, a lot of consultations, and the first thing I am asking about is, do we have top management commitment? And if I don't have it, I don't start the project. Because top management commitment will make me sure that the project will continue, at least to, the, to its end. It, it, it can be a success and a, or a failure, but I need to complete it to the end. To have it, I need to have top management commitment. Then, what is the certification scope? Is it for a small part of our organization, the whole organization? Is my organization a part of a bigger holding organization and, and so on? What is the scope? Is it a multinational company? Is it a small company in, 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 in one city or in many cities? and so on. What is needed from COVID? Now we know simply what are the contents of COVID-5, so what we need from COVID-5. And by the way, I forget to tell you, I'm sorry, uh, you can visit Isaac website and just register on this website for free. You will have COVID-5 standard, totally for free, not the enabling processes. Not the implementation guide or security or, or all the other guides, just the first framework for COVID-5 is for free after registering. So you can do it and you can decide after reading it what we need from COVID-5. Then, shall we do it ourselves? And it's a very good question because we have three options inside our business case for this project. Because this is a project, by the way. The first one, which is do nothing. Don't do governance. We don't need it. Or, or we need it, but we don't. We can't afford it. So do nothing. The second one, do, do it yourself, DIY. We will do it by our teams, our people. But we should have some training, some guidance, some books. And the, the third option, have someone to do it for you. So you should decide. Then, if you decided that we will do it by ourselves or we will have someone to do it for us, you will need to ask yourself, do our internal IT department and the involved staff have enough knowledge and experience? Or should some accredited training? Do we need any accredited training? And I have said it already. Do we have enough awareness? And I have said it already. So we need to have training, awareness, workshops, so that to increase the knowledge level of our people, whether the project will be implemented by our service or by other organization doing it for us. To have a plan, don't believe anyone who will tell you that this is a good plan. Take it and implement it. No, there is nothing like this. A plan must be designed by the people involved in society organization because they are the best ones who know the state of the organization and points and their good opportunities they have now. So you can have your plan in this simple way. First, to management support. More than half of projects will fail because of 
don't forget some of it is free, like the uh, the framework itself. But you need some more documents or training, so you will pay for it. Yeah, I don't need the six transcripts. Maybe I now this year, 2015, I just need three, four, and maybe I need all the six processes and more. So make this before starting. To have a clear scope. All of the start with quick wins. Don't start with big chunks. Concentrate to increase their commitment, and at the same time have the needs. Some processes depend on or built on others. So whenever you decide your scope, don't start from any process. No, because we have some processes which can't be the start. They should have others built before them. So take care of this point. And try to have continual service improvement as your best friend in this journey. Don't say what we are doing is the best. No. No one is knowing the best from the first time. So try to have guidance from people outside, subject matter experts, forums on the internet, uh, um, newsletters, whatever you can have, have. And try to continually improve your tasks and activities all the time. And at the end, don't ever forget about having a change champion or champions. And a change champion is not someone who will implement what you like to implement. No, it can be this one and it can be a customer, a user who uses what we create. So we need to break ice. We need to have as this as we can as a change resistance. Change resistance can be beaten unless we have one or more change champion or change champions inside our organization. How can the ECB help us in the ISO IEC 38500? The ECB is one of the most famous and most successful training provider in the world and especially in ISO standards and it's accredited by ANSI. So whenever you are attending a course by the ECB, accredited partner and accredited trainer, and whenever you pass the exam and you are certified, now you are having a Level inside our industry. The ECB provides a lot of the main fields, quite in the right transport, telecommunication, like security, like information security, like health. So try to decide what you need. Man, need other things before governance, something like information technology service management, the ITSM, the ISO IEC 20000. You should have a look on this or have a training before thinking about governance. We can't speak about governance the highest level and at the same time we don't know what is the definition of a service, of a service management. What are the processes we need to deliver high quality services? And at the same time we have ISO IEC 27000. It's for information security management, not service management system for the ISO 20000. So we need to have more than one ISO standard, and one like the ISO 31000 for risk management. So try to have a look on these courses and check whatever will suit you or your team before starting thinking about governance and implementing governance. Because governance, it's easy to say, but not easy to have. Specifically for this standard, which is 38,500. We have a symbol, a small short course. It's about corporate governance 
of IT manager. It's one course. It's a two-day intensive course enabled participants to know what is governance and how to implement it from the point of view of ISO IEC 38500. After attending the, uh, the course, you will have an opportunity to sit for the exam and whenever you pass the exam, you will have your certificate as a manager for corporate governance of IT. If you have any questions, please uh, send them and uh, excuse me if I have to took a lot of time, but it's an interesting uh, topic and I would like to provide you with as much as I can information and experience. And thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Al-Shami. I think that was a really effective overview of the corporate governance of IT based on the 38500. For the moment, I haven't received any questions from the audience, so I suppose that everyone really did understand your presentation well. Um, if, they, if you do have any questions in the meantime, please feel free to send them at asia at pcb.com and we will respond to you accordingly. If, one, uh, if anyone wants to refer back to this webinar, please note that the webinar is recorded and will also be available on our official YouTube channel by tomorrow, so check back there. Uh, moreover, for all of you interested in GRC, every Wednesday at the same time, there will be webinars related on the field. And please keep updated by checking our website and other communication channels on upcoming webinars. Thank you everyone again for your attention and I look forward to, to your participation in the upcoming webinar sessions. Mr. Alshami, if you would like something to conclude. Uh, it, it was a great time for me and uh, I hope that you all uh, can make your decision about governance because it's so easy to say, but we need to organize our implementation plan carefully. Thank you. I agree. Thank you very much and speak soon. Bye. Goodbye.